Welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. This is Dr. Bison EM. Today we're looking at our Q highlights and under our Q highlights, we are looking at SN1 reactions. So in our previous video, we were looking at SN2 reactions. If you haven't watched that video, you can find the link to that video in our description and in our comment section. Okay, so let's look at SN1 reactions. So the golden question is, what are SN reactions and how do they occur? So SN reactions are simply substitution. So substitution, nucleophilic. Nucleophilic reactions that occur by first order kinetics so first order kinetics so they are denoted as sn1 so the rate of an sn1 reaction is only determined by the substrate so rate is only determined the rate is the speed at which they occur so the rate is only determined by the alkyl halide alkyl halide and the substrate, the, the nucleophile rather, plays no role in determining the rate of this reaction. So the rate is simply the constant times the concentration of the alkyl halide. Alkyl halide. So what this means is that if you double the concentration of the alkyl halide, the rate of an SN1 reaction will also go up. But if you double the concentration of the nucleophile, the rate of an SN1 reaction is not affected at all. Okay. So now, what you should know is that SN1 reactions occur very fast in tertiary alkyl halide as compared to secondary alkyl halide. And they occur very slow in primary alkyl halides. Let's continue. SN1 reactions. So SN1 reactions are favored by polar protic solvents. So polar protic solvents. So the question is what are polar protic solvents? What are polar protic solvents so polar protic solvents are simply solvents capable of forming hydrogen bonds so solvents capable of forming hydrogen bonds let's say hb bonds okay hydrogen bonds there examples all alcohols so all alcohols are polar protic solvents Water is a polar protic solvent. All right. So anything that has got uh, a lone pair of electrons that can interact with anything to form hydrogen bonds are polar protic solvents. That's what you need to know. It's very, very important. Okay. So now let's look at examples of uh, SN1 reactions and how they occur. All right. So let's look at an exercise here. Right. So before we look at this ex exercise, there's one important thing that we need to uh, determine and s explain. SN1 reactions occur in one step, in two steps rather. They occur in two steps. This includes step one. Step one is formation of a carbocation. So formation of a carbocation. How this carbocation, carbocation at the alpha carbon. So at the alpha carbon. This carbocation is formed when the living group lives on its own. Step two is nucleophilic attack. So nucleophilic attack of carbocation. 
so the nucleophile will attack the carbocation. In SN1 reactions, you should also know that in SN1 reactions, they are alkanide shifts. Alkanide shifts. to form uh, more stable carbocations. More stable carbocations. So this is going to be understood very well in practice when we start doing them. Okay. So in SN1 reactions, they are alkanide shifts to form more carbocations. Examples of alkanide shifts, we've got a methanide shift. So in the methanide shift, a methyl shifts. Okay. So the methyl group shifts and then we have what we call a hydride shift in a hydride shift the hydrogen takes a ride so the hydrogen shifts the hydrogen shifts that's a hydride shift all right i can't wait let's get into this example and see how this happens okay let's, so let's see how this example happens okay so exercise so perform SN1 reactions on the following. Perform SN1 reactions on the following. So show the mechanism of how that happens. A, you've got this SN1, this alkyl halide here. And then this alkyl halide is reacting with methoxide in methanol. So methanol is an alcohol, so we know it's a polar aprotic solvent. Okay. So what happens here in step one? So step one, the living group lives on its own. When the living group lives on its own, you're going to have a formation of a carbocation here. So this is the carbocation. So after the carbocation is formed, the nucleophile, which is a negatively charged species, which is in solution, is going to come now and attack the carbocation in step two. So step, step two, there is attack of the carbocation by this nucleophile there. So now what is going to form is this now forms there, like that, plus the negatively charged species in solution. So always remember this. If you started with a negative charge, net negative, when the reaction was starting, at the end, you're also supposed to remain with a net negative. There's a negative charge here at the end, and it started with a negative charge here at the beginning. So these are the two steps for which SN1 reaction mechanisms occur. They are very easy. So step one is just formation of a carbocation. Step one, formation of carbocation. Okay. So the reason why SN1 reactions will occur very fast in tertiary alkyl halide is because the tertiary carbon here forms a stable carbocation as compared to a secondary carbon. And then a secondary carbon forms a more stable carbocation as compared to a primary. Okay, let's do another example. B. So this is B here. So B. Okay. So there's an alkyl halide here. And this alkyl halide is reacted in, in hydroxide, like that. Okay. So now, what is going to happen in step one? This guy, so step one, this one will live on its own. When that one lives on its own, then there's going to be formation of a carbocation here. Okay. But the carbocation that is formed here is on a 
secondary alkyl halide. So this is in a secondary carbon because this carbon is only attached to this carbon here and this carbon. But this secondary carbon is adjacent, meaning it is next to this carbon here. All right. So what will happen is that this methyl is going to shift from here to here. This is what we call a methanide shift. Methanide shift. The reason why the methanide shift is occurring is because this carbocation will be more stable on a tertiary carbon than on a secondary carbon. So what is going to happen is that if that shift happens, you're going to have the methyl will now be here and the carbocation will be here. Okay. So that is our new compound. And then our nucleophile in solution, which is the hydroxide, will come now and attack that carbocation like that and form our product, which is this one. Here. So this is our major product. Our major product. It is not our only product because before the carbocation shifted to here, it was here. So there are some products that are going to form where the nucleophile in solution might come and attack this one here and form this product here, like that. So this is our minor product. But our major product is this one that has got a more stable cation, and this is our minor product. So that's how shifts, that's how shifts happen in SN1 reac reactions. Let's look at C. Okay, so we have our compound here. And then we are, we are reacting this in, um, say, potassium hydroxide in ethanol. If I say, okay, this one is occurring by SN1, I give you a directive, this is SN1. What is going to happen? In step one, this is going to go on its own, and then what is going to remain is a carbocation there. So the carbocation will be here. And then this carbocation is going to attract this negative charge. So the negative charge will come now and attack there. Okay. So in step two, so this is step one. In step two, this is what is going to happen. The product that we're going to have plus the bromide that left on its own here and carried electrons, so it's negatively charged. So that is how SN1 reactions occur. That is how SN1 reactions occur. Okay, so key points to note on SN1 reactions. SN1 reactions occur in tertiary alkyl halides very fast as compared to secondary alkyl halides and Primary alkyl halides are the the least. Okay, they are the the least. All right. So it's very, and then they are favored by polar protic solvents. Okay, so if you do an SN1 versus SN2. If you have an alkyl halide and you want to compare, which one is going to happen? Is it an SN1 or an SN2? Know that if it is a tertiary alkyl halide, an SN1 will happen. If it is a secondary alkyl halide, both an SN1 and an SN2 will happen. If it is a primary alkyl halide, an SN2 will happen, will happen, but an SN1 won't happen. If it is a polar protic solvent, now you look at the solvent. If you look at the solvent and the solvent is polar protic, it is SN1. If the solvent is polar aprotic, it is an SN2 reaction. All right. I hope you've gained some value from this video. 
the next thing we're doing are elimination reactions which will be in our next video see you in our next video